In the meantime, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has called for the establishment of specialized courts to aid the speedy trial of oil theft cases as well as other financial crimes in the country. The chief of the staff of the executive chairman of the commission made the call during an investigative hearing at the House of Representatives expressing worry that the absence of such measures has caused the delay of many of its cases. Now joining us to discuss this is President Ijo Youth Congress, Udengs Eradiri. Mr. Eradiri, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm former president. I'm not the current okay. president. Thank you. Apologies for that. Now, um, what are your thoughts on the call for the establishment of special court to aid the speedy trial of oil thefts? Well, I, I, you know, for me, I'm just surprised because what are you setting up a special court? Are we going to expand the scope of corruption for judiciary again? Because at the end of the day, it is the community peasants that will be uh, tried in such courts. The big guns who pay uh, campaign funds to the tune of fifty, hundred, ten, one million dollars are the ones who are involved in this bunker, and they will always pay their way. If uh, our judiciary today have, have reduced itself to the table of buying and selling, adding um, oil theft to to set up special courts for oil theft. And we'll be just expanding the scope of uh, money making for the Nigerian judiciary. Nigeria mm. is not serious. If we are serious, we can deal with these issues. Our courts will be able to, if we have men of integrity, we will deal with all our problems. Our problem does not lie in whether we should go and police the, the pipelines. It lies in our leadership selection process. Once we have the right leader that the people have voted for to do his job, we will solve this problem once and for all. I saw an MPC talking about a, a contract, huge contract in millions of dollars to measure the total quantity of uh, oil that lives there. Every pipeline has a flow meter. The IOCs over the years, when they have been reporting 2 million barrels, 2.1 million barrels, how did they get to that point? Because every pipeline comes with a flow meter. Since the divestment started and Nigeria started taking over the running of, of the oil and gas sector, you started hearing about these uh, unreported uh, uh, products, crude oil that they are carrying from one point to the other. There is nothing wrong with the, pros, the laws. Our leadership selection process is faulty, and so it's throwing to us leaders who, who come to just make the country dry. People who do, are not patriotic in their job. The, our security agencies, if they are serious, this thing will stop. It is not community people that are stealing this oil. This community, this court they are talking about will be another round of making money for judiciary. The EFCC is a toothless bulldog. They just back, they cannot bite. You take, somebody steals one billion. Now it's in Nigerian palace, you steal one billion. Just keep like uh, 300 million and, 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 and uh, Pump it into the EFCC. They will send their own lawyers to destroy the case in the interest of the highest bidder. We are just running around circles. Since I was a young boy, I've been talking about this OFT today. I'm still talking about it because we will never get the right people until we tinker with our leadership selection process. Mm -hmm. Mr. Radiri, obviously, you've just told about how you feel about the courts themselves specifically and how this is pretty much. Uh, not necessary, but uh, have you also identified the costs associated with setting up and also maintaining these uh, um, courts? Are they also a concern to you? I don't believe in it. So I don't, I, for me, I just think that we're just wasting our time because <laughs> go to the blue waters, you will see the vessels as me and you are talking now. They are loaded. They don't report to the country, but the NMPC knows. You forget. And this oil theft comes in a lot of dimensions. NMPC borrowed $3 billion and that $3 billion to pay back 12 point something billion. How much was the benchmark for the per, per barrel that they used to do that loan? Assuming the oil price goes to, uh, the, the price is fluctuating. At what rate did they borrow the money? The excess, where is it going to? Who is going to measure the quantity that these people are taking. How can you borrow $3 billion and somebody is going to be, you are going to pay back 
12 billion dollars. Look, something is fundamentally wrong. We, we are looking for court now. After court, we'll look for, for church. After church, we'll look for Babalawo. <laughs> are we serious? Is that right so for me, I don't want to be talking about cost of uh, this thing because why can I be talking of something I don't believe in? Look, they cannot produce uh, diesel. The Niger Delta people, young boys who are looking for work, are producing fine, clean diesel, better than what they are importing from Eastern Europe. So, Mr. Radio, let me come in there them. and ask you what your suggestion would be regarding these boys who are in the Niger Delta is actually this, producing. Is What's your I'm suggestion? Making? I have I have always said, I, I suggested to the last president, create buffer zones, clusters in each state. I say, NMPC, you are going to be giving them 1,000 barrels. The former president, the vice president, while touring the Niger Delta, said he, they will be giving 1,000 barrels to these boys so that NMPC will manage it, buy back all what they have produced, and then pump it back into the system. These boys have developed their technology. They are no longer using fire. They are using uh, generators and electric burners. So technology is already growing in that sector. Why are we criminalizing it when we cannot produce this, this AGO? Go to the Niger Delta. When did you hear that uh, kerosene was scarce? But kerosene is what the local people are using. They are producing it in the Niger Delta. Why not government step in? Since your method is failing, step in and create buffer areas in the states. Every, all of you, you have put yourself into unions. When I was IYC president, we put these boys to unions and we brought them before government. So government knows the people that are supposed to be doing this. And then they are cooking here. Government is coming to pick it. You are giving them, you are making money, you are saving the environment, you are creating jobs. Mm. And you are stopping this police and thief with Nigerian military and the boys. Because the boys are buying arms because they believe that you the thief, the big one, me, I take this small, you say you will stop me. What is the instrument of coercion? The gun. So the boys go and acquire those guns and confront them because they know they are also stealing. So if we know that this is the problem, let us create buffer. Then go take and produce diesel. But these boys will produce diesel overnight. By tomorrow morning, you will see more than more than one million liters of diesel. Hmm. Uh, is something wrong with us as a people? Is that right, Harry? But because Mr. But Raddy. because these people are also funding elections, yeah. they are big yeah. players in the system. Nobody wants to go there and name them. The banks that so raise the LCs. We're on a tight yes. schedule, but thank you very much for your submissions. Uh, they're very clear and uh, quite intelligent. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs>